And what we call this is whatever fires together, wires together in neuroscience. Remember that, we talked about how things wire together. So if, for example, if I actually would put myself in a very positive state and I squashed my finger as an example, the wiring for my finger, the sense on my finger will be triggered at the same time as the experience being triggered. So that could connect that, me pushing that finger to that good feeling. Does that make sense? So all I'd need to do is set up something that we would call a anchor. In this case, it's a feelings anchor. So we're going to call this a kinesthetic uh, anchor. Well done for coming up. So what we normally do is we actually ask someone, where would you like to put the anchor? So let me give you an example. Because you don't want to do something that you're doing all the time. Some people actually grab their earlobe and squash the earlobe. Because if things are going bad for them, they can do that and no one would actually know what they're doing. Sports athletes, when I work with NBL basketball team players, etc., we actually put it somewhere so people aren't really noticing what they're doing. So they'll go and they'll go, fantastic, and they'll squash their little finger. That's a very popular one because you don't walk around going, right? And it's something that you can do that no one can notice. I've had people actually hit them on the side and do a whole pile of things. So you've just got to work out which one you want to use. So is there anything that you'd like, a little finger maybe? Yeah, that's great. Okay, now remember, when he's squashing his finger, he's sending a sense up to the brain because the brain realises there's pressure there. So it's actually firing a neural network in the brain saying, hey, there's pressure on my finger. So that's the first thing to understand. When he's pushing his finger, he's firing a neural network in the brain. Neuroscience tells us, again, when we fire, whatever we fire together, we wire together. So if I got him in that very positive state and he pushed his finger, what do you think happens to the neural networks? Firing together, they wire together. Okay, are you comfortable with sharing that experience with us? Okay, so what I want you to do, and I'm just going to write down, I need to know three things. I need to know what he's seeing. What else do you think? Hearing. Hearing and feeling. feeling. So we call this VAK. So what I'll do is when he's explaining it, I take a couple of notes and I try and ask him about it. Now before he gets very involved in it, I'm just going to get him to give me a bit of a rundown on the experience, but then he has to live it, because if he's not living it, I can't get the power of the full neural network to connect to it well. So can you give us a bit of a rundown on the experience? And when he starts talking about it, if the experience is more important, he will actually uh, start getting excited about it, because we'll know if it's really something important or not. So can you give me a bit of a rundown on what the experience uh, was? 2001, uh, playing rugby, we won the... Uh, first grade grand final. Great. It was the we'd won it. We'd won first and second the year before, but this year I was playing first grade. Right. Excellent. Now what we want to do is we want to make sure it's only one event. So you can't take me to many events. Now I'm sorry I'm actually doing this and teaching at the same time. So as soon as he talks about the peak event, I don't then mind about what happened in the past. I've got to bring him to that one event. So he's going to have to remember a moment in time in that grand final. So when were you at the peak? What was the what That's was the, the finish? Thing? at the finish and what were you doing what were you seeing um, I can see the grandstand I can see the um, supporters coming on the field it was a great sense of relief it was also you know, a good sense of joy but also the relief that you sort of got there and, and pulled it off it was a fairly close game and so the supporters were kind of jumping on the field were they yeah, yeah right. on the, awesome on the field and, as you do Awesome, absolutely. And uh, what, what are you hearing? Because it must have been a lot of noise, I imagine. Yeah, lots of noise and, yeah. and basically it's um, um, having gone through that to deal with the same group of fellas with those 15 people when you go into the huddle after the game and you know, I can't remember what the words were said but it was the feeling at yeah. the time. Okay, just you closing said. your eyes, just imagining you're back in that event and just closing your eyes. So imagine you're at that event, what are you actually hearing in your head? You're at that grandstand, what, are, what are, do you actually hear? Uh, lots of different voices, you know, people whistling and carrying on. And Excellent, so we hear whistling. Great. And where are you actually feeling it? All those nice feelings about in the body, where actually are they? Really, sort of all through the body. Okay, so is it, can you explain any part of the body that you're actually sensing it? So if you imagine you're there, you're actually all excited about it, you remember the screens and everything, where are you actually feeling it on the body? Probably shoulders and back. Okay, so you're feeling on the shoulders, are they lifting, are they pushing, what are they actually doing? Uh, there's a sort of weight coming off them because they've been battered, so the, in some regards the pain had gone away because it had been replaced with something else. Fantastic. Now, this is an event that he's well, well and truly connected to because when we start getting him towards it, 
You notice his physiology changes. But he's very self-conscious in front of you because he, uh, you know, it's not necessarily fun to be up here talking about something. So what we're going to actually ask him to do is he's going to close his eyes and we're going to try and get him to that event. So to put as much emotion into it to get you back into that event. When he's in that event, what do I want to do? I want to get him to squash his finger and what I'll actually say, anchor. And if I say anchor, what do I want him to do? Squash the finger. I'm going to keep him in that state because the more emotion he puts in, the stronger the anchor. If he's right up in that emotional state and then he anchors, he has now wired those two together, which means that when he's in a down state, he could actually use that to trigger him getting into a positive state. Makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? And afterwards, what I want you to do is you can go and suss him out next time you see him, say, squash your finger, and you will actually see a change. You should actually see a physical change if he's anchored right now. And once he's set this anchor up, he should actually be trying to emphasise. Every time something wonderful is happening in his life, what does he do? Boom. He builds it. Because we need the anchors when things aren't going so well for us. Okay, awesome. So what I want you to do is we're going to close your eyes and I want you to try and get you back there. And I'm actually going to talk through. So we're going back to 2001. You're at the rugby, your first grade. You're at the grand final and it's just finished. You've got that grandstand, all the supporters jumping over onto the field and you're feeling that relief and joy, the pain's going. You're feeling the weight lifting off your shoulders and back. You can hear all the whistling and the voices and the scream of celebration. You can see them all there and it's that grand final anchor. And you've got that grandstand, you're hearing all those screams, feel, feelings of joy, the whistles, the voices, everyone running around, the sporters on the field, the weights coming off your shoulders, you release the pain, you're feeling around the back, anchor. Okay, awesome. Now, I'm not going to go into the same degree, but what do you feel from doing that? Because he's still self-conscious up here because he's not playing it hard. Have you noticed? So, what I'm going to actually ask him to do, we're going to do it one more time because he's not playing hard enough because of you. Does that make sense? But if he was on his own with me, he would get right into it. So what we're going to try and get him to do just one more time, we're going to really try and relive it. So you're going to have to forget about all them or just consider them to be the supporters. Okay, they're jumping the fence. Okay, <laughs> just be careful of that one because um, <laughs> he might be the doorman or the bouncer taking you out. Okay, so um, remember the more emotion, the more you live it, the more stronger it's going to come. So. Um, closing your eyes, you're back at the 2001, you're at the rugby first grade final, you've actually got the finishes, the grandstands all cheering, they're standing up, you've got people jumping over the fence, everyone running around that relief, that joy, you're feeling it in your shoulders and back, all that weight's coming off and anchor. Your voices, you're hearing the whistles and screams and celebrations, anchor. Good one. Excellent. So how do you feel? Mm, like I was there. Awesome. Now this is very powerful. But what he would need to do is go away in his own time and actually get himself in a, even a higher state because the more higher state he can get, the more neural networks he's firing, the more we can connect that emotion. Awesome. Please give him a clap. Well done. <clears throat> now remember, the amount of emotion you put to it, the stronger it is. So um, it was really good of him to be able to come up in front of you all and explain that. But if you are doing it on your own, you can actually do this technique on your own and set it up or anything wonderful happens to you, you can trigger it and build the anchor. In the event of someone actually having an issue, um, say for example they've lost confidence because they've been made redundant and they're actually a really good worker but they get in front of the interview and what happens? They stuff up. What we do is we set up an anchor so when they get in there and they're feeling low because of the pressure of being made redundant, they trigger the anchor, that pushes them into a better positive state, they sell themselves better and as a consequence they get a job out of it. So this is a technique that you can set up and well done for coming up because that's actually going to be an awesome anchor for you. If you actually set that up and utilise it in your life, that can be the times when you actually need to kick yourself out of a bad state by pushing that anchor the body is already connected to say squashing on that was also triggers this other aspect of my brain which actually puts me into a positive state. There is a question. Yes. 